Hey everybody, how's it going? I don't know why, but it looks like Facebook for desktop is being weird. I wanted to share out to all my pages, but it's okay. We're just gonna do this for now. Let me move over here a little bit. Okay, so I want you to say hello if you're joining me live. Go ahead and type in the comments that you're here live. If you're watching the replay, let me know that you're watching the replay. I always love to see who is hanging out here. Um, I'm trying to figure out like a good height for this to be at. I guess I can just hold it. Hopefully it's not too shaky for you guys. So I have been on a retreat these past few days and on this retreat we've been talking a lot about working with our shadows. And this can be a topic that's really triggering for people. It brings up a lot of, you know, emotion because at the end of the day, what it is, it's bringing out these things that we've been suppressing inside of us, that we've been ignoring, that we've been ashamed of, that we've really put in the dark and said that this is bad. I don't want to associate with this because we learned from a very young age at some point there was, you know, an instance that happened where we were like, oh, this is bad. I don't want to be this person. I'm not associating myself with this type of thing. I'm bending over so I can better <laughs> um, see you guys. So the shadow can be slippery, it can be slimy, it can be tricky to work with, and it's also where there's so much magic and there's so much transformation possible for you. So, so many people just like want to run away and not deal with their shadow. I totally get it. I did not want to do shadow work for so long because you know, we want to look to the good things. We want to look to the light and like the happy stuff. And it can be really hard to go um, into the depths and into the darkness. But that's only like if we're only looking at the light, we're only looking at half of the story. And so we have to look at the darkness because that is the fullness of us. That is what completes us. That is what makes us whole. And by shoving these things, uh, you know, to the side, we're actually giving them even more power. So by pushing them away, it's like it's like a beach ball, right? So like if you have this beach ball and you're in the pool, let's pretend like the the beach ball is all this stuff that you don't really like about yourself that you wish you didn't have going on. Hold on, I'm gonna try and set up a different. Ugh, I don't have my tripod thing with me, so I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. I think this will work. Give me a second, guys. Um, so you're trying to stuff it down and, uh, it, it works right temporarily. It works and you have control of it and you can stuff it down. Yes. Thank you for the hearts. But then all of a sudden it like pops up in your face and comes out in unexpected ways and you cannot control it. And so that is very similar to your shadow self and your shadow side. And so when we put these things in shadows and we push them and we suppress them, they pop up in other ways that are not productive. However, if we really learn how to claim our shadow side and embrace it, then there's so much available to us. This is the easiest way. I'll just keep bending over. Um, so personally for me, something that I've worked on for a while now um, and it's not like you just work on things once and they disappear. There are multiple layers, but this idea of competition and jealousy has been a big one for me. So ever since I was younger, um, there's a story where I was younger and I was like a year and a half years old. And oh, hey, is that Teresa? I can only see. Yes, it's Teresa. Hello. Um, so I was a year and a half, Teresa's at this retreat with me, um, and what happened was I, I spit on a picture of my little cousin, and my mom was like, Lexi, like, why did you do that? Like, that's your cousin, you love her. And I was like, mm, she's taking away all my hugs and kisses, like, and I got like all upset and I got jealous, right? And so this thing, this jealousy thing, has been something that has stuck around ever since and for years. And it's been something that has been really difficult in relationships that I've been a part of. Um, it was something really difficult to deal with when I first entered the coaching scene. I've shared a lot about this in my story about 
being super competitive and comparing myself to all the other women inside of my program and doing things just so I could prove that, you know, like I was the best and I could win and um, it could be really, really toxic, right? But that's when I wasn't in control of it. And so with the work that I've been doing, um, I've come to really own this competitive side of me. And yeah, sure, sometimes like it can get uglier or there are things that I'm like, oop, there it goes again. But I actually really love that competitive side of me because I think that um, she's like fierce and she goes for what she wants and I think it's really attractive. And so the jealousy piece is definitely something that I've been working with over the, these past few days because when I look at this idea of competition and jealousy, jealousy is like the lowest form and the lowest expression of it. Um, that's funny, my cousin whose picture I spit on just liked my Instagram post. Love you! <laughs> um, and so <laughs> that's really funny. Um, but what was I saying? Yeah, so jealousy is like the lowest form and there's like a lot of work that I was doing around it uh, this weekend and of course there's still more work to do, but something that was really powerful was to look at like what the medicine is for this. Like what is the highest expression and, and how can we look at these things that we put in shadow? Why is the fan on? I'm in, I'm in North Carolina right now. I'm not in Boston, so I don't, it's, it's a little warmer here. Um, anyway, so what we've come to do, right, is we take these things that are in shadow and we say that it's all bad, but it's not. So there are golden nuggets inside of the shadows and there are these superpowers and there's this magic to the shadow that's inside of it. And so when we're able to really like tap into that, that's when we get to really claim our power and where the magic happens. And so what I was starting to see is that actually, you know, the highest expression of somebody who is jealous, if you look at this energy um, it, it, or this competitive side, oh, Christine, hi, I wish you were here with me too. I miss you so much. I was wondering where you were. Um, but if you look at this, you can see that the highest expression would be someone who like really owns her power and like loves herself unconditionally. There's not this like insecurity or like, oh, she's better than me. It's like you just own your shit and you're unapologetic about it. And so one of the archetypes that I'm, I was working with today that I really embodied and stepped into is the sorceress. So if you guys are familiar with my work, you know that inside of the Fully Activated Woman, my 12 month program, I talk about 12 different archetypes and um, the seductress is one of the 12 archetypes that we explore and she's one that I've been working with for the past like couple of months. Um, the seductress and the sorceress specifically, like I've really been diving into those deeper. And so today I really stepped inside of the power of the seductress and oh my gosh, like it was so powerful and there was so much medicine there, so much healing that happened when I did that. And so just to kind of give you a glimpse into the seductress or how I see the seductress, the seductress is this woman who, she's flirty, she's fun, she's fierce, and she knows what she wants, and she goes after it, and she magnetizes it. And there's never this feeling of judgment or shame or whatever. She is unapologetic about what she desires, and she doesn't just like, you know, like go after it aggressively like she like magnetizes it to her she claims it and she is somebody who is just so powerful just by being um teresa who's on here right now she also was claiming the sorcerer's archetype and um she did such a beautiful job and one thing that i want to give her credit for is she said about how the sorceress has I like they, they magnetize or sorry not the sorceress the seductress like you magnetize people and people look at you they stare at you they want more of that and so um it's a really cool uh, archetype to step into and also they just the sorceress claims her sexual power yes we were both amazing and I loved how we had some similarities and overlaps and some different things it was so cool to watch 
but she claims her sexual power. She owns her body. She loves her body. And she uses it unapologetically. Um, and she's not afraid to be sexual and powerful. Like that is her medicine and that is her magic. And so as you can see, like the jealous one versus the seductress, like completely different energies, right? And so this can be really powerful medicine for this jealous type or the competitive type because when you are in the seductress like you are everything you desire you know you're sexy you know you're amazing you know you can have everything you want so why would you look at anybody else why would you compare yourself um so that was really really powerful for me and uh, the women who were a part of the retreat were noting that when I stepped into it, they were like, you're just magnifying yourself as the seductress. And I definitely feel like um, I do have that energy a lot of the time, but then can slip into like the jealous one in certain situations. And I'm sh and, like, give me, give me a one in the comments if you've ever been there before, if, you know, you're in your business and you feel really confident about a program that you're launching and then all of a sudden you go on Facebook and you see something that someone else has put out there and you're like, oh shit, wait, hers looks better. Or, oh my God, she's talking about that. Like, should I be talking about that? Give me a one if you've ever felt this like comparisonitis and like, oh my gosh, she's doing it better than me. Like, I wish I could do it like her. If you've ever felt that or even in your personal life, like if you've been dating somebody or interested in somebody and there's somebody else who um, maybe has taken some t an attention away from you and you're like, what does she have on me? Like, why is he or she looking at her and not me? So if you've ever, thank you for the honesty there. Yes, one. So um, if you've ever experienced it, pop in a one because I know I'm not alone in this and I know that there are other women who have experienced this and it's totally normal right but we've got to own it we've got to look at it and then we've got to say okay like what do i want to embody instead so um yes one 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 amazing so we don't have to stay stuck in this lower form or this lower expression but we also don't have to hide it anymore we get to take it out we get to look at it and we get to really claim the power because if I were to just keep stuffing this to the side, it would pop out in ugly ways, and it has in the past. Like, past people in past relationships with me could probably tell you that. Um, I have a very amazing and a very healthy relationship with my husband because I've worked on this, and of course there's still more layers to go through here. Um, I mean, he's just amazing in general too, but um, you get to choose differently, and that's really, really powerful. And so our coach, Joanna Lindenbaum, who is running the retreat today, um, she asked us, what did she say? She asked us a question. Um, I'm trying to think what she asked. It was a good question to think about. It was something along the lines of like, what are you seeing around shadow and how it relates to your clients? How can this really help them? And so I shared that. I've been really exploring like this taboo side lately. So anything that's, so the past couple of months I've really been into, like I was just saying, the two archetypes of the sorceress and the seductress. So the sorceress is all about exploring the shadow and the seductress is all about exploring um, sexuality. And I, I shared that I think that there is such a power when we're able to tap into our shadow and our taboo side. And I also shared that I think this is the missing link for my clients. I really feel like um, my clients and my audience are these people who have such incredible messages to share with the world. And um, they really want to step out there in a big way. They want to be able to get paid for being who they are. Yeah, Christine, you're totally a seductress. Absolutely. And the missing piece here, though, is that they only want to show the light and like the flowy and the glamorous and um, sorry um they only want to show like the glamorous and the glitzy sides and they don't want to show like the raw the real sides but that that edge is where the magic is and that's when you become relatable and that's where you become interesting and that's where you stand out and i'm even noticing it more myself the more i push into my edge and the more that i 
bring out these topics of like my shadow side and the darker parts of me or my sexual side and talking about ooh like sex crazy right the more I'm getting people reaching out to me wanting to know more wanting to be able to work with me in a, in a you know a deeper way and so I really see this shadow side as the missing piece to claiming your true power to really standing out in the online world um so again i know it's not easy to go there it's not necessarily pretty but it doesn't need to be all doom and gloom it can actually be really exciting it can be like an adventure to go on to explore so yeah i wanted to share a little bit about what's been going on with me inside of yes it is yes it is inside of this retreat here because i know i've been sharing with you guys that i've been doing a bunch of shadow work recently um and been facilitating it with my clients and it is so powerful to see what happens when they take these things that they feel like are wrong or dirty or bad or taboo about them and they actually clean them and start to infuse them into their work it's insane so if you are desiring to really tap into your shadow self to explore it more to really be able to claim your true power and um not have this like weighing you down and instead have it free you then i would love to speak with you i would love to help you really figure out what's going on for you how you can truly own this power um christine says thank you so much for going live tonight total fomo oh girl we can get on a call i can fill you in on everything that's been going on here i've missed you um but i'm glad that you're you're getting at least a little sneak peek into what happened um but yeah i i'm opening up some one-on-one -on -one spots i rarely open up more one-on-one -on -one spots but i've had a couple of clients um, finish up after like a year and a half of working with me and so now it's time to open up some space for some new clients so if you're desiring to go deep to get raw to really dive in and own your true power and stand out I would love 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 to speak with you um, if one-on-one -on -one isn't your jam that's cool too um, I've spoken about my program the fully activated woman still some spots left there and inside of it we really go each month is dedicated to a certain archetype so this month is all about the sorceress so we're going deep into shadow work this month um, and really exploring their shadow side and each month has a different archetype associated with it so really learning how to step into the energy and activate these energies so we can access them at any point in time um, because it's really powerful because then you get to choose how you show up. And one thing I actually also shared today inside of the retreat is that I think we can be so limited and we come to identify ourselves like as this one person, like, oh, like I'm shy, like I don't, I don't really like to talk to people and I'm, you know, I'm not outgoing and so I'm not good at business. But that's bullshit. That's a story we've told ourselves and we've, every time we say that we're that person, we perpetuate that idea and that identity but we have a choice. We have the power to break through this mold. And so that's why this program is so powerful because each month we're learning about a different archetype that you can step into, that you can embody, that you can channel the energy from, um, and that you get to claim as your own because we have access to all of these archetypal energies. Uh, and we get to try them on for size and really step into a new energy in different situations as we desire so that's the power that happens when we can activate all these archetypal energies and really access them so if you want to go to lexidangelo.com forward slash f-a-w you can find out more about the program there um, it includes retreats and group calls and archetypal trainings um, modality trainings so this month the training is all about the sorceress so i go into what that's all about um and then the modality training of the month is all about shadow work so how you do it um, you'll be doing it experiencing it yourself and then how you do it with clients as well so really good stuff here um and we can explore this in a one-on-one -on -one capacity or inside of the group program but just wanted to share that here and 
invite you to step into that darker side because there is beauty there, there is power there, it is not bad. Um, and if you feel like you've been stuck or stagnant or something's missing, I guarantee that this is a big piece of what's going on and why you're not allowing yourself to go to the next level. So reach out, message me if you have any questions, but hopefully you got a little glimpse into what shadow work is all about, what shadows I've been dealing with and working with, and just, you know, I hope that it just inspires you to take a deeper look at what's really going on because it's not all rainbows and butterflies. Like, yes, this industry is awesome and there are so many incredible things and it is great to talk about the positive and the light, but it's also really juicy and really fun to talk about the dark too. So I'd love to talk about it with you. Just reach out if you have any questions. I'm here for you, I got your back. I will support you through this. Um, and otherwise, I hope you guys have a great evening. Talk to you later, bye.